Welcome to Billboard Breakdown with Studio.com. Today we're gonna remake Greedy by Tate McRae and it's gonna sound like this. Hi guys, my name is Bad Habit. Let's dive deep into the production of Greedy, the new single by Tate McRae. That's currently number 11 on Billboard, but number one on Spotify. And the song was produced by the one and only Ryan Tedder. We're gonna do it live so you can see every step of my process, so this way you can do it too. So the first thing catching your attention already from the intro is that sound playing that arpeggiated part that keeps playing the whole time throughout the song. And some of you may not know exactly what that instrument is, and that's most likely a steel drum or one of those those similar instruments, anyway, one of those ethnic instruments. So whenever I need a real instrument that sounds really authentic, I either go for contact libraries or Omnisphere. And in this case, I want to start from Omnisphere because I remember using some of those sounds before. So let's see if we can find something similar in here. Okay, that's a kalimba. No, not this one. Ooh, that's this sound. They use this one. Hang drum, sugar packet. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, this is better. Low pass filtering, because there's a lot of those high frequencies. So we can just duplicate this, going into the verse. All right, that was easy. Let's move on to drums. I wanna start from the kick because I can hear clearly that we have a stomp kick in here. And what do I mean by stomp kick? Let's see if I just type stomp, like these kind of sounds, you know? So it's probably a combination of some of these sounds. I'm gonna start testing these out and just see what sounds the closest. I really like this one. And in general, these cashmere stump kicks are always great. Yeah, yeah, I, I love this one. It's not the first time I use this one. Yeah, so we're gonna start with this soft tube saturation knob, a free plugin that I really, really love on kick drums. So much better already. But now let's try to layer this with the other one. Woo! Yeah, love this. Now the saturation is bringing out a lot of the room, so we probably have to play a little bit with the envelopes to make them sound a little bit tighter. Reducing the sustain a little bit of this one. All right, yeah. Yeah, perfect. But I think we can do the same on this one, to be honest. There we go. Okay, now I still have the feeling of that stump kick, you know, the room, but at the same time, it's like tighter. What if we look for like another kick that gives us a little bit more body, like a totally different kick, not a stump kick, or something that's gonna help in that range. This is not bad. Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is very cool because a lot of body, a little bit of top that might also help. Yeah, super. Listen how they blend well together, right? This kick is now covering all the body, but we still have that stomp feeling. So when you layer kicks like I just did, I always suggest that you compress them together to make sure that they're blended nicely. And to do this, my favorite compressor is the one coming from the SSL channel strip. You can use any compressor actually to do this, but I really like the character of this one. I wanna see something in between like three and six dBs, barely touching the six, that's fine. But as you've probably noticed, we kind of lost some low end due to the compression. So we can make up for this. I'm gonna boost a little bit the 50. There we go. Whew, okay. You can really hear how the three layers are disconnected without compression. But now, super tight. I love this. So simple, but so effective. Some filtering to make it darker. And now I wanna add just a little bit of uh, transient. Very happy about this kick, so now it's time for the snare. So the snare sounds a little bit lo-fi. Reminds me of something like Jay Dilla, those kind of snares. Something like vinyl snares. Yeah, like, these are not bad. This one is pretty close to the one they used. Pretty cool. So you know I like to apply a little bit of drive. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Get in there, get in there. But I also want to find the hip hop snare, not this. Something like that. Yeah, I like this. It's kind of adding a little bit of that clappy feeling. Yeah, three instruments. It's like a kick, a snare, and 
that hang drum and it's already sounding amazing. I'm also looking for a clap that I can layer together with the drums because I noticed that the first time the snare plays, there's also a clap on top of it. So the clap is basically playing on the two, but not on the four every single time. But one thing we got to pay attention to if we want a little bit of that flammed feeling, you know, when you have a clap, you're not exactly clapping on the grid perfectly every single time. So we got to pre-shift this one a little bit ahead of the grid. You can definitely hear the flam, but we don't want this on the four, right? So only on the two, flam in first time, but second one, it's not happening. This clap is very mono, it's like down the middle. So I'm thinking of using some plugins to just make it more stereo, like hear the difference. Now it's much wider and I think it's gonna sit well in the mix. Yeah, very cool. I think the snare is pretty close now, but theirs is definitely sounding a little bit more lo-fi. So I'm thinking of using some plugins. I wanna try this one. I remember having some presets in here, like mics and speakers. Mm, mics. This is pretty cool. Oh yeah, that's the one. So without it, listen, all of those high frequencies. And now it's sounding lo-fi. So much better with this. Yeah. Love it, love it. We're not done with the drums yet, but we definitely have enough to move on to one of my favorite elements of the whole song, which is that bass slide that's happening when the verse starts. That that's just insane. So we're gonna try to recreate that. And that sound definitely reminds me of something really analog. So probably a Moog or something like that. And what's happening is that they're playing with the pitch bend to have that sliding effect. Gotta make sure, first of all, that the pitch bend range is 12. Yeah, so we go down to that low F sharp. Now we gotta tweak this. I don't want much envelope. So basically this happens when the drums come in. Something like this. So now the sound is still not there, but we're getting there. I wanna add some distortion. Distortion definitely, but like not destroying our sound. And I wanna use this one to also enhance the stereo. And this preset right here, I use it all the time for doing this. Oh my God, that's insane. This is really helping like in the low end. Need some side chain, something really simple. Yeah, perfect. So it's tame down when the kick is playing and it's coming out. This is probably my favorite thing in the whole production. I was listening to the song and I noticed one thing just now. When we go into the verse, the hang drum becomes a little bit more plucky. And so we probably have to do some automation. Actually, unfortunately, I cannot automate these parameters into Ableton. So what I'm gonna do is just duplicate the track. I'm gonna keep this one for the intro while this one is gonna be the one we keep for the verse. We're just gonna shape it in a slightly different way, more plucky sounding. Exactly. A little bit shorter, so it's not in the way of the vocals that come in in the verse. And I'm gonna also do this with the sustain. Perfect. So there's a bunch of layers of percussions and other stuff happening in the verse. But before we do that, I wanna move on to the hook right away because this is basically the verse. It's super simple. Only when we get to the chorus, we have some new elements coming in. And also we're gonna see that we have chords changing while the verse is just one chord, it's just one pedal. This one right here. And that's it. And that's also what makes the song so refreshing when we go into the chorus because you're like, oh, I'm hearing something that I've never heard before. You have that feeling of the song that's kind of opening. So everything we had in the verse stays also for the chorus. We still have the hang drum, but it's gonna do something slightly different towards the end because it's following the chords. This. Exactly. They're probably playing the chords with some sort of like pad, something very simple, it's nothing really special. Kind of reminds me of the Juno. Maybe, yeah, right here. Perfect, this is perfect. And these are the chords they're playing. So now we have to support this with the bass. We need a super simple saw wave for this bass. And there's one sound that I used recently in here. I think it was this one right here, low saw. This one has too much resonance. So I'm gonna pull this down. Exactly. And it becomes like a super fat. I 
I don't want it bright at all. It's starting to sound like the actual song. We can definitely layer this one with a second layer, a more like subby layer. I want to try the Prophet for this. The Prophet is known for having really fat basses. This is really cool. I don't even know if you guys can hear it if you don't have headphones or like good speakers. First thing I'm going to do is go back to the other bass and just get rid of some of these super low frequencies so that this one can cover that range. Saw bass doesn't have all of that low end because that's going to be covered by our sub bass. Nice. At this point, I want to add a little bit of distortion to this saw bass. And I like to use trash sometimes to do that. I like this one, electric trash. Without it. And with it. Hmm? Yeah. I love where this is going, but guys, now the bass is getting in the way of the kick. So we definitely need some sidechain to make sure that the bass is tamed down whenever the kick is playing. I like to use this little trigger. I'm going to put it right here. So let's go get that track kick. I'm going to find it in here. Drum rack, sidechain. So whenever the kick is playing, there's actually room for the kick. Because the bass is tamed down. Love this. This is sounding amazing already and we're still missing one of the main elements of the chorus, which are vocals. I'm not talking about like Tate McRae's vocals. I'm talking about background vocals, those vocal pads that are insane, that play underneath and they're so, so cool. We're gonna do that in a minute, but first I gotta finish here. I wanna also compress the bass together, these two basses together, because again, we layer them and whenever I'm layering something, I like to compress it even just a little bit to make sure they fit well together. And I wanna show you guys that this is doable also with stock plugins. You don't have to have like amazing plugins. Sometimes I know I tend to use like expensive plugins, but I want to show you that this is totally doable. We're going to try this with the glue compressor. And I like this because you can see that it's compressing, but it's slowly going back to zero and it's compressing again whenever we play a new note. I just want to blend this with the dry signal. So there is some parallel compression happening now because we're blending the dry signal with the compressed signal. And I'm happy with this. I quickly added this layer with Dune this is basically a super saw. I just wanted another pad to support the Juno. So they sound like this together now. So guys, before we go back to the drums and finish with all of those additional layers, percussions, ear candies and stuff like that, I want to pay attention to the vocals because those vocal pads that we hear in the chorus underneath Tate's vocals, so dreamy, like back there with a lot of reverb. I want to show you how you can create an effect like that. So I'm going to record vocals myself. Of course, it's not going to sound the same because I'm not Tate McRae, but that's not the goal. The goal is getting as close as possible while showing you how you can do that in your own songs. Alright, something like that, but I'll have to do some more takes to get a good one. I know it's not even close, but we're gonna get there. So this is where they started from. They did something like this, and as you can see, I did two left, and this is basically our right. You have this stereo effect, right? And the first thing I want to do is making sure that these are washed out in like a huge reverb. Valhalla Vintage Reverb, of course. Of course, I don't want it 100% wet because I still want to have a little bit of that dry signal coming out, but still the feeling has to be super washed out. I want to try the Palace one. It's a new mode. They just added and it sounds... Exactly. It sounds like this. Perfect. So listen to this already. Still far from the final result, but already you have that you know, feeling that we were looking for to make it sound a little bit more like a female is singing, Little Altar Boy, which by the way, I think they used anyway. And I'm not only using this to sound more like Tate, but I'm using it because I can hear that in their vocals, there's definitely a higher octave, which is just impossible to sing. Not even Mariah Carey can sing that high. So they definitely must have pitched up the vocals and probably blended the vocals, like the dry vocals with the pitched vocals together something like that and of course we're gonna do this on both i'm just doing it on one but i'm gonna copy the same settings to the other one that's pretty cool that's pretty cool because you can definitely hear a little bit of my dry vocals in there but it's mainly that higher octave that you can hear now and now together they sound like this Woo! i love this There's one more thing that I want to try. A little shimmer. You'll just hear what it does. You can hear that tail, right? Now, kind of creating a pad out of these vocals. Wow. Woo. 
sounds insane. Sounds insane. What a clever idea they had to do this. This is bringing the chorus to like a whole different level. You have that very super simple one chord and then you get into this chorus and like chords are changing and you have this. It's just it's so cool. Great idea. Okay, I'm not done with vocals because I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but the same melody that the hang drum is playing, Tate is also singing that and they made a loop out of that. A loop that's kind of filtered and underneath the whole thing. So we're gonna do that very easily, once again, recording my vocal. And 16 times later, I have this. We needed stereo, so I used some slap and stereo here. I duplicated that track and I added a doubler on this one. So we're gonna blend these two together. Super quiet compared to the other one. So it's just adding something to the stereo field. But now on both of them, I just wanna play a little bit of Alter Boy again. In this case, I wanna reduce the formant. Yeah, but of course that's too loud and it's not filtered. Like I said, that is filtered throughout the whole song, except for a couple of parts where they actually open the filter and you can really hear that. You know, this layer is supporting the hang drum. And then it slightly opens up here. And that's only when we get to the end of the chorus that we hear this layer without any filtering or anything. So we're gonna open the filter. Actually, you know what we can do? We can just group these two things. I'm gonna keep this gain for controlling the gain difference because here that's gonna be definitely louder. Now, this is gonna go away here. And we gotta add that ooh thing. So now we have all of the main elements of the song, but we're still missing a few things. And I wanna start from the intro. When we go into the verse, we don't go into the verse like that. That would be boring, right? I was talking about that that thing that happens just before the verse drops. I'm looking for something like that. Go. That is pretty close. What do you think about this one? I think this might be it. We're gonna use just the first one and we're gonna try to cut out the P. I think it's gonna work. A little echo boy, just for some slap effect and stereo with. Yeah. I love this. There is also a reverse vocal effect that leads to this. It's just a splice sound that I found and I added some Alter Boy to make the formant a little bit darker. Cool. Some more effects I added, some down sweeps here in the chorus. These kind of things. And also some sweeps up. We also have a very simple reverse kick that's happening a few times throughout the song. And whenever you want to make a reverse effect of anything, in this case, the kick, this is how you're going to do it. Open a track under your kick. I'm going to select as the input, the kick. So this way I can record the kick to audio, since in this case, the kick is a MIDI. If you have it in audio, that's even simpler. You just have to like reverse the kick and that's it. But now I want to record this. Now I have my kick right here. Just press R on Ableton and voila, you have a reverse kick. One thing I like to do with reverse stuff like that, I usually cut a little bit of that and then I move this so it matches the grid. And here we have it. So I reorganized my session and now a few more things missing. We're gonna start from those percussions and those layers that are missing in the chorus. I found these two layers that complement really well. That's exactly what I was looking for. Those Jack Hughes snares. You remember Jack Hughes, Krillix and Diplo? Those snares that used to sound like very tuned. Listen to this, right? This is also helping. I kind of try to define even better the note using this resonator C sharp right here. So together, they really help, I think. You can definitely hear that note in the snare, but there's also these claps that I added helping with that flaming effect. These keep playing also in this little break that we have at the end of the verse, right? So yeah, love that little thing. Some percussions left and we're done. There's one shaker playing from the verse already, which does something like so I'm gonna have to find the shaker loop and probably chop it up. So that's what I did. And they also added some percussion fills. This is really cool. I just, you know, found some loops and I chopped them up. But the important thing here was finding some loops that would fit the song. That's why I chose this hand drum loop because it's all part of that ethnic world. I was thinking if you want to keep the ethnic feeling, we need some percussions that sound like that. And I added this little tabla here to complete this fill. Ooh, 
I want to listen to this again. Okay, so this is a bonus for like real nerds. Here in the second verse, something weird is happening, like some sort of like reverse effect, but it sounds like the reverse effect is almost on every single element of the track. Right? The track stops for a second, that's super interesting. And to do this, I just bounced the hand drum like I showed you before and I created a reverse effect. But that's nothing special. What's interesting is what's happening on the pads. I use Effectrix. It's just going to be on in this little section. So basically Effectrix is going to reverse whatever we feed into it. Kind of creating this weird effect. At the same time, the same thing is happening on the kick. Look. Super cool. All right, we got to the end, guys, and I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. And I'm so proud of how it came out because I think it sounds really, really amazing. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, any doubts, leave a comment. And if you have any requests, a specific song that you would like to see in the series, just let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next Billboard Breakdown.